were yet. My thing, my I guess my question really isn't about not being your authentic self or being black or being whatever. My question was more about the the obstacle of them seeing us in a cross cultural market. Not that you have to hide that you're black or not be a black mom or that. We so don't are you saying that if you things. if you blog as an African American woman, for example, about you do are they clothing, are they turned off by right, that? Or do they Yes. Is that the question? They do. That's more the question. Yes, okay. How do you they do. Overcome that? Yeah. It's being seen as a blogger. Right. Blogger. By continuing to have discussions like this in front of people who are able to talk to brands to make decisions, by continuing to like push the issue on your site, by you know writing about the soccer and the you know the the new black culture. You know, I think what we need is to be able to pull up a site at any given moment and say, see, look at this. Mm -hmm. You know, right. and so I'm not seeing a lot of that. So I'm turning, I've been turning my site into that. And it feels good because it's very natural. But, you know, being able to kind of see that and not saying that you can't talk about the heavy stuff, the, you know, the race issues, but, um, but balancing that if it, if working with brands on kind of general market stuff is what you want to do. <laughs> and so I said, okay, we'll do it. So instead of going on a European vacation, I took that money and put the deposit down uh, for the Georgia World Conference Center in Atlanta. And that's where we held the first Black and Brown Conference. So that's a little bit of the history of the conference. And so this is a conference that Black bloggers built. It's your own house. Uh, if you can't be real here, you can't be real anywhere. Um, so we, we want to welcome you. And we're excited that you're here. We're really excited about the, the line of speakers. So actionable goals. So uh, the question that I always get is how do I get more users? How do I get more visitors to my website? Um, so if you start with that as your premise, you've all, it's going to be a very difficult answer to start with song. So what I like to do is be super specific in the goal that we're trying to be. So in this case, increase Facebook likes by 100%. So um, and Facebook likes to my page, not necessarily to my content, to my page. The reason why that's important is because more and more people are going to be, wake up in the morning and the first thing they do is fire up their Facebook, right? And there was a thing back in the olden times called RSS readers. Anybody remember these? <laughs> Who opens up an RSS reader nowadays? Anybody? Still? Okay. After Google Reader went out of business, I would use a rap for me. So now, 90 I would say, well, just say a large majority of my content, of the things that I kind of consume, either comes from Facebook, Twitter, or email newsletters that I've signed up for. I mean, the RSS readers kind of played out. Um, so people, no disrespect, <laughs> the RSS reader is, is, is slowly is changing, or Facebook is slowly changing things. Um, so, uh, so it's very important to me, a strategy for me, is I want people to like my Facebook page. The reason why that's important is because if people like my Facebook page, I put my content in Facebook. Uh, if they've liked me, they'll be able to consume my content, hopefully share it out, and we get some of those uh, network effects. Right, you know, keep it real fact, all right? I don't want people to subscribe. The other thing um, um, we thought about is that I don't want to come off seeming too salesy. Right, okay, more people on the app. Um, you know, those, those different types of things that actually pop into our mind. But once we did that four day sale, we made that 3700 paid the mortgage that month. We did a few other things with that money. I was like, I don't care who jump off this thing. I successfully executed that four day sale every month since. Um, you know, but even, even the beauty of doing that sale is that our audience doesn't mind because we nurture them in the meantime. We give them great content in the meantime from our blog and we feed them um, information and things that they use. And then when we do offer actual products and services, they're not just things that we're trying to offload and get them to use. Um, they're things that actually help them, that increase their lifestyle, you know, things that they actually appreciate, and then we can take it from there.